Was Asmongold right? Uh-oh. It's because I'm right. But is he, though? Asmongold has been having oh, opinions yeah, about that. for a long time and a has long been time attacked ago. multiple times for them. And I think he's I right. I sure have. And there is data to prove it. It's all just a personal attack. Mm -hmm. There are no actual arguments against what I'm saying. This is there actually about something else. attacks that try to discredit me because... And, and I, I'll tell you why. The reason, you, know, you want to know why? It's because I'm right. Around That's September right. 2023, Asman was grilled by Quick and Max about his take on raiding because he was either not able this. to raid anymore or at the very yeah. least not capable of actually mythic raiding. For those of you who don't know, Quick is the former president of Blizzard and a prominent high-end WoW funny. player and Max is the GM and raid leader of Liquid, multiple winners of Race to World First titles. Yet they were both wrong. First of all, as far as being a capable mythic raider, Asmongold is no slouch. Man has been a anybody can be a capable mythic raider. There's literally shiny lights and buttons that tell you where to go to press buttons in the game. It's not hard. It's a video game. The video game is programmed to lose. It is not impressive that a person can play a video game at a high level. This is one thing that happens with like one game Andes, where like they view being good or bad at a game as an indicator of virtue. I'm sorry, guys, it's really not. Mythic Raider for years. Now yeah. I'm not sure what is qualified as skill, but if I can clear Mythic bosses with these parses, then we can assume Asmongold can smash it, provided he played the game consistently. Yeah. Which is why we go to the second point of it all. I mean, I raided in WoW for over 10 years. I'm pretty sure I could raid if I wanted to. I don't know, like, what WoW players think about raids, but if you really think that being able to clear a Mythic raid two months after its release is anything more than a participation reward, I don't know what to tell you, man. Prove you can? I did for 10 years. I did it 30 times, but I can't do it 31. He doesn't raid or maybe even play anymore. Maybe. I don't know. I wish I had more time to watch all of his streams, but I can only say he cleared a Mirdrasil this right. tier at the very least. Now, the overall yeah, sure. takes that Asmund has been having about the game revolved around raiding, but mm -hmm. not exclusively, and they yeah. stem from the perspective of a gamer more so than a WoW player. Yeah. What do I mean by that? Well, there are two main types of players that enjoy World of Warcraft. There's the WoW player, someone who really only plays WoW, maybe dabbles into another game once every yeah. few years or so, or maybe play some mobile games. Mm -hmm. Primarily, however, it would be that that person just plays WoW. Then there's the gamer, the WoW player that might also play Final Fantasy, maybe other RPGs, maybe yep. Dota or League, gets into some Elden Ring and nope. Baldur's Gate, Valorant and so on. That person would be a gamer, a player that dabbles into video games like what a regular gamer might do. The main difference between the two types is a simple difference of context which is true over any genre, not just WoW and not just video games. Mm -hmm. The more you know, the better you can judge and assess things. And sometimes WoW players unfortunately fall into an echo chamber type bubble where they cannot really see past what WoW is or what a game could be outside of Azeroth. I think this is 100% true. This is probably the, the thing that, like, I've been saying the most is that, like, before I played a lot of other games like Dark Souls and, like, Final Fantasy, a lot of my opinions about WoW were very much contextualized only about WoW. But whenever I started playing other games and I saw how other games solved problems that WoW had, I realized that there were a lot more shortcomings in the game than I had imagined. And I think that really... There's a reason why these other games are very popular. There absolutely is. So, yeah, I think this is an issue that, like, WoW players have. Like, for example, I think that the best example that I can use is having to run back from a boss fight. I think that having to run back after a wipe from a boss fight and, like, the metagame of soul stoning and rezzing people and then summoning them, summoning them into the raid, I think this is the most obnoxious, annoying time-wasting mechanism that raids have and i remember going through a raid and like looking at like the amount of time that i spent actually doing the bosses versus doing other things related to the bosses whether that was doing trash doing runbacks resurrecting buffing and i found that i was doing bosses less than half of the time so like over half the time in the raid 
I wasn't even really doing what I was there to do. It was horrible. And I think to myself, like, what really is the purpose of this? Gives you time to reflect on your failure? Well, you can just stop pulling. Like, let's say you have a time to reflect on a failure that the tank disconnects. What, did he, did he fail? Did he, did he have the wrong ISP? Well, maybe, right? But like sometimes mistakes just happen. I think that WoW players that defend having to run back to a boss, that's like my peak example of WoW brain, where like they've only played WoW and it's always been like that. So if somebody wants to change it, then they don't want it to be like WoW. The person that has never played another game besides WoW will not have a fully fleshed out opinion over how well designed yeah. WoW is or could be. That just wouldn't make sense. It would be just like someone saying that a bowl of cereal is the best dish one can cook, but they never had a steak, a risotto, yeah. a cake, or a burger. You cannot say WoW is good or bad without playing other games. At most, I think you that you can, but you don't have as much context or information about what that opinion really means. And compare one version of WoW with another version of WoW. Yeah, that's Unfortunately, about it. World of Warcraft does not exist within its own pocket dimension, but exists in the direct competition with other games, making the quality of other video games be relevant, hence why it is important to view WoW from the lens of what a video game can be like. Yeah. I made this whole tangent to point out that just because Asmund doesn't play WoW anymore, or didn't at the point of this controversy, doesn't mean he doesn't know if WoW is good or bad because we as well play other games we have a second youtube channel dedicated to well the i mean i play a lot of games i played wow for i have thirty five thousand hours in the game like if I, me playing the game for thirty five thousand hours and rating seriously for 15 years 10 15 years like if that's not enough then i'm sorry but you're just coping like i know it better than almost anybody if i didn't then people wouldn't have watched my videos for 10 years about the game Diablo 4, which was previously made to cover variety gaming. We play roguelites and single player RPGs like Witcher and yeah. God of War, and still have very similar opinions to Asmongold. Sure. With that out of the way, as far as opinions go, I believe all of ours are valid. Now, whether we are right or yeah. wrong, that's a different topic, and today we'll be talking about why I think Asmongold is right, and I can also prove it. His main concern was with the fact that rating sucks and fewer people yeah. play it. This opinion extended to Mythic Plus and other facets of the game like PvP as well. The game has issues and because of these issues people are playing it less and this was just before 10.2 was released with the numbers pointing that he was right at the time. One of Asmongold's biggest opinions that can be unpacked in a lot of ways is that the game is designed for the 1%. For rating, that essentially means people focused on the race world first and most likely guilds that aim to get into the Hall of Fame, meaning being- And Blizzard has even said that they judge whether a raid is too hard or easy based off of like they want a raid to last more than one reset. Why does that, why are you even thinking about that? Why is that even on your radar? You're talking about like, less than a hundred people and you're designing content around that that you're gonna nerf 15 times that's insane one of the first 100 to kill the last boss of a raid before yeah. everyone else or if we look at the numbers now out of the total 22,000 Farak kills only 651 are on mythic and this is yeah. close to the end of the season not even hall of fame meaning that less than three percent of the kills are on mythic now that doesn't mean that less than three percent of players have killed Farak, but a further look at the number of guilds that actually killed Farak points that the number is fairly close currently sitting at 670 guilds as of recording this video out of the total 5,470 yep. guilds that can be considered mythic guilds. I got bored trying to scroll more to see how many heroic guilds there are and normal guilds as well, probably but it's safe to assume thousands, that yeah. there will be way more left. Yeah. Should everyone be able to kill mythic frog? Probably not, but should there be this big of a difference? I don't think so, and neither does Asmund. And the reason there is, is because the game is being designed for the 1%, which is a cute way of saying it's probably too hard or harder. It's too hard. There's too much going on in the game. It's too much. And again, the reason why people say there's not too much is because number one, they've played the, a lot of these people played the game for like 10 years. And so it's like, of course, it's not too much for you. You understand everything about the game. You know everything about it. And number two, you have add-ons that are telling you everything. Like, look at this. 
Like, I bet a lot of people, if they had to do this boss with no add-ons, they would have a very different experience. So, like, this is the issue that happens, is that, like, you, it, it's, again, like, this artificial difference between, like, difficulty. It would be unplayable. Yeah, it would be extremely hard. So I'm sure that, like people probably could do it, but it would be like like twice as hard. I think that if you want to have a hard boss fight, that's okay. But the way that they do it and the way that people have to like solve the problems with like add-ons and shit makes the boss fights like it, it's like you're not really like how can you accurately judge the difficulty of something whenever you have three programs installed on your computer that make it easier and you've played it for 10 years? It's like people that say Dark Souls Dark Souls is easy. Like, yeah, I think Dark Souls is easy. I've played it for 300 hours. A new person isn't going to think that. And it should be. The difficulty of the fights with intricate mechanics already create a huge barrier of entry for people yeah. when you need complex weak auras to even exactly. offset the fact that now we have private auras. I think that the race to world first and Blizzard's fixation on creating competitive content has ruined the game. A person wanting to clear it has ruined like end game pve progression because like mythic plus is designed around poop so soccer's mythic plus is designed uh, uh, sorry mythic plus is designed around neckbeards raiding is designed around neckbeards like that's it and it's not the good kind of being a neckbeard it's the bad kind Mythic for Rock, the boss with the best loot in the game, yeah. has to be in one of these small percentages of people. It is skill wise, needs the right Oops, amount soccer, of add ons, right. the proper schedule to allow for the progress towards the kill to be made, and for what? A piece of gear that is equivalent to next season's normal or heroic raid level gear? This you is why I don't raid. This right here is why I don't raid. This is a joke. I have a gear reset every six months, and then LFR gear is better after that? What the fuck? Like, no, I. that's awful. That's stupid as fuck, yes. Overemphasis on the race world first, and esports in general has shifted the game to an overly designed, overly complex combat system that still alienates a lot of people and essentially has made raiding less popular yep. than literally spamming the same dungeon over 30 to 40 times per season in Mythic Plus. Well, raiding is like, the reason why Mythic Plus is, is better than raiding is because it gives you better gear and it also is easier to do. And you don't have to commit to a schedule. Like, I think a lot of people downplay the idea of committing to a mythic rating schedule. Hey, guys, I can't do anything for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night because I have to play a video game between the hours of 8 p.m. and midnight. That is insane. I think every single time that Blizzard has to retune a boss, it is a failure. That's right. You, you should, should never, never have, to. have to retune a boss. That's right. The boss should be released in a way that is fair and fun. And if people kill it quickly, so be it. And if people can't kill it, then get better gear. Add to this yep. the fact that even for those mythic creators, most of them, us included, cannot kill bosses until they get nerfed. After we test them on the PTR beforehand. This is so much and why? Is this all needed? Who are we making the game for? The 100,000 people watching the race to world first for a week and a half? What about the other millions that play for the other five months? Potentially millions. Or would play if the game didn't feel like you need a university degree for it. The problem is that nobody wants- I think also like people will try the hard raids and then because they're not in their nerfed state, they just get completely farmed by them and they get demoralized. Like Mythic Plus is probably like that for people too, to an extent. There's like, just like, you think about doing one trash pull in Mythic Plus and how many things that you need to be aware of happening at the same time in that one trash pull. That's a lot, man. It is a huge amount of things. And like, at a certain point you ask yourself, this is the question that I ask. Is this making the game better by having this many spells, this many things happening, this many mechanics? I don't think it's making the game better. I think it's making it worse. Wants to raid. Nobody wants to raid because raiding isn't fun. 
Obviously, Asmin is hyperbolic here, but the numbers of raiders being several times lower than that of the Mythic Plus, an endless predictable grind for mediocre results, yeah. points to this conclusion and there are likely issues and will likely always be issues that can be improved for all things. Sure. And this isn't an argument against the game being difficult. Just had this conversation. Well, with you have, you have again, like, and why would you raid at any level besides Mythic? Because all of the gear sucks. Like, really, why would you do that? Like, maybe you do heroic for, like, trinkets or something like that. But, like, especially normal mode raids, what's the point of this? Like, what are you getting out of a normal mode raid? It's a waste of time. With our patrons earlier as well, the game can be hard and easy as long as it is fun. Mm -hmm. An example of the game being hard but fun was and still is the Mage Tower. This was a massively yeah. successful system introduced in Legion that pit the player against some of the highest individual skill expression they had to put out, but the encounter and rewards were so sought after that people just spammed the living shit out of it. And it and wasn't even that big of a deal. The Mage Tower just gave you a cosmetic and everybody wanted to do it. This whole thing changed for raiding. I won't stay and debate every yeah. single boss, but currently, after a few nerfs of course, the raid is overall easier than Abris, and in my opinion, Farak is way easier than Razageth. This is mostly on the heroic okay. side, since that's where most people play, but likely it reverberates to normal and mythic as well. I haven't done And if we look even. at the numbers, we can see that just 10 to 5 has more people playing than entire previous patches. I am looking at logs, since it's the only access to any form of data that can point to how much the game is being played. This does Yeah, I, I think that really, if you make the raids easier, like, you're always going to have people that want to make content harder. Like, you'll have speed runs, you'll have different challenge runs, you'll have different stuff like that. You don't need to make super, super hard content in a game. Like, it's okay to have some things that are like this, like Final Fantasy, like Ultimate Fights. It's, it's okay to have this. But, like, whenever this is a core part of, like, player power progression, it becomes a problem. Because you can always find a way to make things harder on yourself. And that's what people that are competitive do. You don't need to just make it harder as a baseline doesn't mean we have 500,000 players, but it does mean it's at least a few more times more popular than previous raids. And you might say that this is just Red Paladins wanting the legendary, and you may be right. That's and at the true. same time, that supports the argument even more, especially Asmongold's complaint that the gear gets less relevant with each tier. Yeah. Farming OP legendary gear that lasts for longer is more enticing and brings people to the game. So what mm -hmm. if it's all because of a legendary axe? Isn't that great? Isn't that what we- Yeah, that's what it should be. Like people like, oh wow, people are only doing this raid because they want the cool weapon from the raid. Yeah, I would, uh, I guess so. Yeah, I think that's about accurate, isn't it? What? The vanilla model is superior, don't need add-ons, don't need sweats, everyone can get fulfilled. That is another reason why I thought like larger raid sizes are better is because you can carry people that suck. Just straight up, I just think that's a better MMO experience. I think that trying to make an MMO hard is a mistake. You should not try to make an MMO hard. You want in a game a cool badass weapon to chase and get? Mm -hmm. If anything, that just proves that having meaningful loot brings people it back does. into the game. Now, imagine if this loot was not just a legendary strength axe, but something for more people. Imagine if the loot could carry you through at least half of Season 4. Mm -hmm. We can speculate, but we can also use the freaking data in front of our face to point out that it is what people have been wanting, or at least part of what why they're enjoying the game currently. It is what Asman was saying he would want. Meaningful loot. If he was right about this thing, what about the other stuff? This is what I think Blizzard should do. I think they should remove 80% of the trash from raids, and yep. they should add a summoning stone right next to every single boss True. arena, and next to the summoning stone, there should be a respawn point that That's if you die to that boss, you respawn at that point. Yep. Although I'm not sold on the raid trash, I think trash makes the raid feel more like a lively place than a corridor with eight bosses just sitting in silence awkwardly waiting for people to come in. I can I think that's a good point and I can see why he thinks that. I do think it should be at least toned down 
to where it doesn't take as much time as it does. I think that there is too much trash currently. A few packs I'm not are keen fine. about the other stuff, having to wait for people in any form, either them getting their butts to the raid or coming back to start another pool, is incredibly boring and yeah, wastes it's so much time for a raid night. True. This is even more of an issue when bosses are particularly difficult and require multiple pools to down, because, yeah. you know, the raid is tuned for better and better people. How would the game turn out if more of these things would be addressed? And what about Mythic Plus? Well, if we can summarize Asmongold's opinion into a concise point of view, uh -oh. the game is overly designed and overly tuned to the point where new people and current people are finding it hard to engage with. Then we can draw conclusions about Mythic Plus. Over the It's just, look at all this shit going on, man. It's too much shit going on. I get sensory overload just looking at the screen. Course of Dragonflight, the Mythic Plus system has been drastically nerfed. We don't have a seasonal affix anymore, and affixes in general are less of a headache. This alone should point to an already existing flaw with the design. Affixes are only fun if they can be ignored, or if they don't just pose walls for arbitrary friction. And if I may be so bold, I point you towards encrypted, awakened, mm -hmm. reaping, and generally affixes that provided bonuses for being cleared or just sheer stupid fun. But putting that aside, M plus is easier and more people can do it. Evidence? How about the fact that there are five times more keys done now than any other season? Easily summarizing a full expansion's worth of keys done within one patch That's that nuts. is not even over. We covered this in a previous video, by the way. And this is without even all of the things being changed for Mythic Plus that people could enjoy. Yep. One of which was also pointed out by Asman, one that we mentioned before and agree with. I don't think that there is a single reason for a key to deplete in Mythic Plus. Listen, Asmongol does not speak for us, or even the player base. He's just one person. I do. And the biggest content sorry, creator I for am. that covers yeah. WoW. Yes. Because I don't think he can be called a WoW content creator anymore. Not really. So naturally, a large part of the player base watches him, may or may not agree with him as well. But yep. Asmongold is a reflection of a section of players within the WoW community. Oddly enough, some of the stuff he says resonates with us as well, so there is something here. Nobody is 100% right, but in this sense, Asman criticized aspects of the game designed to be a, of a negative impact on the game's popularity and enjoy- Yeah, I think that key depletions are stupid, and I don't see any reason for- I, I don't see them adding anything into the game. Like, in no way do key depletions make the game better. Like, I, I just- I think that they just- they just make it worse. Like, and I think that this is really kind of a- a good way to look at it is- is this making the game more fun? Is it making people play the game more? Are people enjoying doing this? Because there's a lot of times where, like, it's something that you're doing, but you don't really enjoy doing it. Key depletions are why I paid the sub. Yeah, key should not deplete. Yeah, it's just silly. It scares people from trying. Yeah, exactly. People are punished twice. They make the IO problem worse. Why would you want to risk some newer players whenever you can just wait for guaranteed carries to apply? Exactly. And that's also another issue, is that like, the reason why there's so much meta... So, very simple. I've said it many times. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about it. The harder you punish players, the harder players try to avoid being punished. And what that manifests in with WoW is that people will try their best to avoid playing with anybody who's not meta. Because the odds are, if you take two equal players, and one person is doing 100,000 DPS, and the other person is doing 110,000 DPS... And that's the only frame of reference that you have to go off of. You're going to take the 110 every single time, assuming that you don't have any other data. And that's really what happens. Without key depletes, you would literally do a massive pull over and over until you succeed, which is a negative play style, restarting the key over and over. I would rather people do massive pulls over and over and over, resetting the key constantly, than them. And also, like, why would they do that? Like, who's doing... Who would do that? Like, a small subset of people? And this is what the problem is, right? Is that WoW players have this mentality that if somebody can slightly take advantage of a system, we have to completely remove this system. No, you don't. It's not a big deal if people take advantage of a system. Who cares? And looking at how some of them were addressed and as a consequence got people to play the game more, 
kind of makes him right mm -hmm. in an abstract way and maybe even more of an empirical way if this path continues with War Within. Yeah. All of this to point to a really cool thing which is the devs are actually making the game better. They have been for a while, honestly, but we can see it in the numbers as well since it's unlikely Blizz will ever publish player-based numbers unless yeah, very we get unlikely. back into the multi-million zone. And if you still don't believe that WoW is doing way better than before and likely better than what most people think, check our video about it right here. More facts and evidence will be provided, I promise. I think that's a pretty fair video. I'm glad that he agrees with Corridor. a lot of this stuff. There are more people that used to play WoW that quit than people that are currently playing WoW. So whenever I say these are reasons why I'm not playing the game, I think that there are a lot of other people that are also not playing the game that agree with that. Asmongold makes the WoW community rage yet again. This is always what it is. This is always what happens. It is the worst time of the year in North Carolina. It's allergy season. And for those that don't know, I am horribly allergic to grass pollen, Ugh. which is why I am wearing this. Otherwise, I, I cannot go outside. Today, though, as Jesus. we go on this adventure out into the woods, we are going to address a little bit of controversy that our favorite bald streamer has created. That's right, Asmongold is at it again, pissing off the World of Warcraft community. So what did he do? You might be It's wondering. crazy to think to yourself that I've been doing this for 10 years. I've been making people mad about this shit for 10 years. Well, he shared his it's three nuts. ideas for how he feels Blizzard could fix World of Warcraft. Uh -huh. And I am going to go over his three points and share my responses to his ideas as a vanilla WoW veteran player myself. Here's how to fix WoW. Reset everybody's Good spells, one, guys. Real and then good remake one. every class with like 10 spells or less. Before I answer, there's a lot of ants on this rock. Uh -huh. So let's uh, oh. move to a different place. Come on, let's go. This I Okay. Okay. Idea right here. I actually disagree with it 100%. I'm a really big fan mm -hmm. of role playing games. And when it comes to RPG. By the way, when I was saying like 10 spells, I meant rotational spells. Like you should have other flavor spells like portals and stuff like that. Yeah, I was only talking about rotational spells. Is I want to be able to play whoever it is that I want to play. I want to have a bunch of spells and abilities yeah. that I can choose from to really create the character mm -hmm. and to fulfill the fantasy that's going on in the back of my head. I just got stung by a yellow jacket. That kind of sucked. I'm assuming that what mm -hmm. Asmongold is arguing for here is just an argument from balance. He wants to play yeah. an MMORPG where the classes are very simple, very well designed, very well tuned, and perfectly balanced with each other. However, I would make two arguments- I think also it makes it more accessible for people to not have to deal with like 50 different buttons. Like in a lot of times, like I think that one of the best high points of class design was actually in Legion. And I think that Legion was such a high point because of the prune of Wad. Like Wad after the prune was bad, but with Legion adding in the, like I, Miss Sependaria in my opinion was way too much. I thought it was way, way, way too much. And like uh, Legion was like that perfect middle ground where like every class felt complete and it felt good, but there wasn't like an overabundance of skills and there were still a lot of things that you could press. ...that I think a lot of people are going to disagree on, mm -hmm. but I'm going to say them anyway, because why not? Point number one, you want to play a perfectly balanced game? You can play chess. Role-playing mm -hmm. games can be kind of stupid. There's always some crazy, overpowered nonsense when it comes to playing an RPG. He's totally right about this, and I agree with him. I don't think that you should build the game for, like, absolute balance. But at the same time, whenever balance becomes too asymmetrical, then everybody starts playing and doing one thing, and it ruins the game. So, like, balance does matter whenever it trends in an extreme. And, like, some class or something is, like, unbalanced to the extent that everybody is playing it. It becomes such meta, yeah. And I think that really the way you solve that is by frequent updates and redesigns regularly to always keep that meta from shifting because the meta will always happen and the longer that you let it crystallize the more people that start playing towards that meta 
In Skyrim, you have the Stealth Archer. In Wrath of the Lich King, to name just one expansion mm -hmm. example, you had the Death Knight. In a game full of complex spells and abilities, there's always going to be a lack of balance. And Blizzard yeah. trying to make every class equal in terms of damage and numericals, I would say that's the reason why all the classes feel exactly the same. They do. And the second reason why I disagree, and this is one and, and I... Yeah, like with every class, there's a big AoE. Like back in Classic WoW, I think that Classic WoW, the reason why class design was so good in Classic WoW was because some classes were bad at stuff. Because like really classes, in order for a class to be able to shine, other classes have to not shine. So like if you look at, for example, like Dragon's Dogma, there are probably classes that can kill golems really easily. But as a warrior, I am fucked fighting a golem. However, if I'm fighting a drake, I can destroy them. It's not even a big deal at all. So, like, each class has, like, different advantages and different things that are easier for them. And that's kind of what my point is. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with, mm -hmm. but it's... I actually think having more spells makes the game feel like a proper role-playing game. And newsflash, and this is something I think even Blizzard Entertainment forgets sometimes, World of Warcraft is a role-playing game, or Imagine it's supposed that. to be. And I would definitely argue, and this is a whole other subject, yeah. that World of Warcraft's RPG-ness has definitely fallen into decline over the years. I, I genuinely hold the opinion that uh, <laughs> more abilities, more customization, more opportunity to make your class who you really want it to be, I agree with that, but I think that you should make sure that a lot of the abilities that are added aren't expected to be rotational combat abilities that people have to have on hand all the time to be using on a extremely regular basis because it just creates keybind bloat and it makes it harder for people to keep up and learn new classes. So like you should have these like flavor abilities and cool things that classes can do, but it's like a uh, like uh, like enslaved demon for example. Enslaved Demon is like a perfect example of a spell that's amazing in the game, but you hardly ever use it. And it's so cool that it exists. So you want to have spells like Enslaved Demon, but you don't want to have just like random filler spells that you have to spam and keep doing all the time. That's good Subjugate for an RPG. Demon. Oh, excuse me. To conclude, when it comes to this point of Asmongold's, I'm actually on the exact opposite wavelength. He wants less I'd be curious to hear what Nixium's perspective is thinking about it in terms of like rotational combat abilities because like that's really what i mean because like for example like if you had a mage like i mean if it, oh 10 buttons total well then you couldn't have any portals or teleports right so logically of course that's not what i meant however i i actually be curious to hear what his, his opinion on that is because i think that he would agree but i don't know abilities but i, I think that what he's saying here is true. maybe he's making this argument more for the sake of balance i'm making this argument I don't care about balance. But more for the sake of I do, fun, but not that much. Because I think fun and madness and sometimes even broken builds, I yeah. think that's a part of what makes RPGs very special. It does. He's right. I'm not saying devs shouldn't try to balance the game at all, but the pursuit and perfectly balance of MMORG has led the game into a state where frequent criticism is the classes feeling too similar and not enough identity thoughts, yes or no. I think that classes felt amazing. There were three high points of WoW in terms of class design. Wrath of the Lich King, Mists of Pandaria, and Legion. And Classic, I would say. I think that even Season of Discovery goes too far with giving classes tools that they don't naturally have. I think that in order to have class identity, you have to have classes that are bad at things. Like what? Like a mage being so able to heal. Now let's move on to Asmongold's second point and hear what he has to say, shall we? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? <sighs> Number two, remove oh. all raiding difficulties except for 40 man raids, and then make 40 man raids of the relative same difficulty as like Old War hard modes. One factor is that I think that optional hard modes for certain bosses, like again, Old War hard modes or like Terrace of the Endless Spring, the first boss, are cool. This point is absolutely fucking stupid because it should be 20 man 
not 40. Now look, I'm a total classic Andy. I mean, I'm even wearing my Death Equals Delete shirt for oh, yeah. Hardcore Classic. But I think that 40 man rating, although really cool, although yeah. a bit of a nightmare to organize, 40 players is a little too much. 20, I think, is a good compromise between the classic Andy, you know, the classic mm -hmm. Raider, and the modern 10 man Raider. It's meet in the middle with 20. 10 but man? I do agree with Who's the... doing 10 man rating? Uh, like, I, I personally, like, look, I think 40, 40 man is too much. I guess I have an unpopular opinion. I do. I, I guess I guess my opinion is not popular. But I don't think that I'm wrong. I I, I do. I, I think that 40 is way, way more fun. It's much cooler. It creates more of an aesthetic of being in a real raid. I think 20 isn't enough people. I think 40 also creates like a community inside of the raid with a lot of people in it. I like it. Yeah, like I do. I like it. It seems that I'm massively outvoted with this, but I do genuinely believe this. Would you settle for 30? No. The idea of the raids no. just having a single difficulty. In fact, personally, in my opinion, yeah. I've always been against all these different tiers of difficulty mm -hmm. when it comes to raiding. I would rather it be that when you go into a raid, you have the same experience that everybody else has had that went into yeah. that raid. You get 19 of your closest friends together. You go and do whatever the latest content is. It's a very challenging piece of end game content. And you come out with that new tier set, those pieces of gear, and you feel like a complete badass. I yeah, I agree with that. I wish that game, like the gameplay was more uniform. And I think that even inside of Mythic Raiding, there's like multiple difficulties. Like how they nerf these bosses. Like I look at some of the nerfs on bosses that happen and it's like this is being reduced by 20%. This is insane. Like the AOE damage to this is like reduced by 30%. Oh my God, this totally changes the way it works. So whenever I see this, I, I feel like that's that's also a different difficulty. And I think that every time that Blizzard has to nerf a fight in like a big way, that's because they 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 tuned it badly. I don't think that you should have to ever nerf a fight. Because it should be tuned in a way that's good from the beginning. I think LFR and normal heroic and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I think that's all just so unnecessary. Just have yeah. the raid be the raid. Have it be that when you killed the boss, you killed the boss of That's the expansion. Right. Yes. You know, you don't go and it means get the same gear thing just for so everybody. that you can kill him again. I, exactly. I, I don't know. I've never really liked difficulties in MMOs, like difficulty scaling when it comes to raiding. I feel the exact same way. That's why I don't like Mythic Plus. I just don't. like. I, I like games that have, like, one uniform difficulty. And the thing is that you can always create difficulty, but if the game creates difficulty, you can't, like, uncreate it in a way. So, like, whenever you have a game that has, like, an easy baseline, the difficulty factor becomes speedrunning. And I feel like speedrunning is cooler than just fighting a harder and harder version. It's just my opinion. I've never been a big fan of that, so I actually agree with Hasman Gold on that regard. Mm -hmm. A single raid difficulty, a single challenge yeah. that every single person equally has to take part in, I actually kind of like that. Yeah. And it provides like a shared player experience inside of the community. So, for example, if you killed Ragnaros in Classic WoW, you had the same experience as anybody else. Now, obviously, if you had better gears later on in the expansion, it's not completely the same. But it's much more the same versus like LFR and Mythic or LFR and Heroic. So, like in Dark Souls, if somebody kills Ornstein and Smo, that means one thing. Everybody knows exactly what that means. And I think that that's what makes it exciting. Same as Dragon's Dogma. It's kind of the same thing. There's no difficulty mode on it. I like that. Before we talk about the third point, I oh. do want to quickly give a shout out to this channel's sponsor, Zygor. Oh. It's World of Warcraft's ultimate guide add-on for leveling, getting achievements, mounts, pets, whatever you want. And it's all linked down below in the description. And before you ask, this water is absolutely freezing because we are not in summer yet. But Jesus. It feels nice on the feet. Remove all add-ons with no exceptions. 100%. Please agree with me. Please. All right. 
Let's get out of here. Please. Please, bro. Please. This is not a good take from Asmongold. In oh. fact. I would say that he probably oh. wasn't really thinking when he said this. I was thinking perfectly. I regret nothing. There should be no add-ons. Period. No add-ons. Zero. And that's not an insult, by the way. It's not an insult towards Asmongold. I like Nixium a lot, by the way. I think this guy's great. I've known him for years. If he disagrees with me on WoW, it doesn't mean I hate him. Okay? Whatsoever. What I mean, though, is a lot of players genuinely depend on add-ons to play the game. Shout out. That's the problem, though, isn't it? out to these guys the first group i thought of when he said oh remove all add-ons were the role players role yep. players depend on add-ons like tongues and total role play in order to really bring out their character to connect with other role players and speak other languages in game griffin heart items so on and so forth role players need this and then in regard i agree that they do and i think that's why blizzard should add it into the game as a baseline just the same way as they did with a lot of the features like for example and i think trial of the crusader blizzard did their first version of like raid uh like raid frames and it was amazing and people had already had raid frames from like x pearl and stuff like that but whenever blizzard made theirs then everybody was it was accessible to everybody so i think that really it's about creating again a uniform experience that people can enjoy but if you like, you can't say remove all add-ons with without also at the same time saying Blizzard needs to be more proactive in adding the tools that add-ons are used to solve, right? And so that's basically what's happening, is add-ons need to also be added into the game as a baseline. Like, for example, Final Fantasy XIV, they don't have chat bubbles in Final Fantasy XIV. So the people did an add-on for it. And then finally, Final Fantasy came down really hard on add-ons. And now Final Fantasy is just adding that feature into the game as a baseline. That's what should be happening rather than people putting add-ons into the game and the UI just being bad. Parts to just simple conveniences, I don't think there's anything wrong with Bagnon, for example, Questy, or even Zygor. You know? I completely agree with you, in theory, but I think in practice it would be impossible to draw a distinction between add-ons that are problematic versus unproblematic. I would even be okay if there was like a community-accepted add-ons, like just for a bag add-on or something like that. But where I draw the line completely is with combat add-ons. I think there should be literally zero combat add-ons. And I even think things like handy notes are bad. Quality of life is fine. I Yeah, like they're okay, but I would just prefer. And I think that like really whenever you start to draw the line, it becomes impossible to know where it is. So, like, whenever I say remove all add-ons, this is my realist take because I think that there would be no way that you could implement this, this rule with having gray area. And I think that it would be better for the game to have no add-ons than to have the, the culture that we have now with add-ons. Guide add-ons just to help you kind of get to max level faster for the sake of, you know, maybe running some raids with your guildies or saving sure. you time from having to boot up a wow head to figure out where that mount is, that pet, how to make more gold or something. Add-ons like Zygor show you how to do all of this. We made it to a sure. bench, everybody. Now I can finally... Sure, there's a lot of add-ons that do that, and I think that's fine, right? It's not really a big deal. It's the combat add-ons that are really, really bad. And I just think that Blizzard can't remove combat add-ons exclusively, and they would have to remove all of them. And I would rather them remove all add-ons completely. And also, I think that there's another factor with this, is like Nixium and I, like we've both played the game for over 15 years, right? So we understand all the nuances of the game, but I want you guys to understand that for a lot of new players, the prospect of having to download a third-party application that then downloads additional mods onto your computer in order for you to play a video game as a baseline is very unsettling. Like, I remember whenever I, I, I had to do it in 2006, and I was like, is this like a virus or something like that? 
it's like it gives people pause immediately. And I, I think just asking people to do that at all is a bit uncomfortable. It's fu And also, not to mention the fact that it's fucking annoying. So I think that really, whenever I'm talking about removing add-ons, I am talking about it from, like, kind of both extremes. Because I think that, like, middle ground players don't really care a lot about add-ons. But I think that they're incre incredibly toxic for, like, high-end players and also really low-end players. Because for low-end players, now this is, like, you know, this is a person that's, like, just started the game recently. And now they have to learn about, like, you know, like, uh, add-ons and all this other stuff. It's, like, basically an extra hidden iceberg of, like, learning curve that doesn't even have anything to do with the game. So it makes it really hard for, like, a newer player to get into the game. And at the same time, it creates such a contrived high-end player experience with all the add-ons and weak auras and plugins and tools that they have that the way that they play the game is so different that the developers literally have to make the game around that context. And those are the people that really get damaged by add-ons. Now, I think that add-ons decrease the overall quality of the game collectively, but I think that those extremes of players, like the bottom and the top 10% of players, are the most negatively affected by add-ons. Shoes on. You can see that my shoes mm -hmm. are uh, a little bit covered in mud. Just a bit. That was the bottom of my feet for a while, but walking uh, from way over there has... Uh, Pretty much cleaned them off. There it is. Nice. I just go hiking like this all the time. That's so much better. Now look, I know that Asmongold. I used to have a place like this near my house. I built forts out there. You know what that place looks like right now? Apartments. Or along the lines of add-ons like details or deadly boss mods yeah add-ons that essentially play the game for you at endgame i'd not even play the game for you add-ons that provide you a higher degree of awareness anything that increases your awareness or the way that you are processing information or add-ons that just track data so that people can mm -hmm. like smack talk you because you're not doing the highest dps i'm pretty sure that that's what asmongold was referring to when he said yeah yeah definitely that that's the worst offender but i do think that i i do think that i have a strong and compelling like my argument for 40 man raids is like i think 40 man raids are really cool and it's like you know a, it's like a whole group of people and it's like a movie like you know lord of the rings is a bunch of people fighting against something like that's my argument for like 40 man raids it's mainly just a vibes argument and like kind of like i think this is cool argument but i do think like my add-on point is a lot stronger and i think that i can really like i can argue that a lot more because it's not just like my opinion like my opinion is i like 40 man raids but i do genuinely think that add-ons are bad you know, removing add-ons without prejudice. You but see what I'm saying? Know. You could make the argument that endgame add-ons like DBM is cheating. It but is. But then you'd also have to make the argument that using Questy is cheating. Using an add-on that records where, like, your certain Peace Bloom spawns are and stuff, that would be cheating. Mm -hmm. I personally don't agree with Asmongold on this one either. I think add-ons are fine, be them small add-ons or more complex ones. I think they're okay. All right, we've made it back. Look at this, dude. In the time that we took that walk... For a second, I thought that he wrote Asmon sucks on the fucking window. For just like a split second, I was like, did he really write Asmon sucks? This allergy season message is almost recovered in pollen. Yeah. That's how bad it is out here. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed our little adventure out here in North Carolina today. Hopefully the comment section doesn't get too mm -hmm. salty because I disagreed with Asmongold on some stuff. But to be fair, I don't give a shit. If you guys want to go on another <laughs> adventure with me, I highly recommend my day one classic WoW hardcore self found video. Check that one out next. It's on your screen right now. And if you guys would like for me to make a video sharing my thoughts on how I would fix World of Warcraft, let me know down in the oh, comment I section below. I want to see that. Below. I'm going home, man. It's hotter than a camel's anus yeah, out here. I definitely want to see that shit. Oh, crap. I think I left Asmongold back at the creek. Okay. He'll be fine. I would be. 
Yeah, be okay with me. That's fine with me. Absolutely. Uh, getting rid of add-ons would require an impossible amount of dev work to compensate. I mean, yeah, but don't you think it's important to invest into that, into the future of the game, if you think that it's problematic? Because I think that it is. I think it's worth it. I, I really do. I, I, I think it's, it's such a big deal to do and make that experience better for, like, the average player. Those poor devs. Yeah, I think it's it's insane. How? Just get rid of Mythic Plus? I mean, I don't know if that's really going to solve it. But, um, yeah, th th this is the way that I feel about it. I, I feel the most strongly about add-ons. Like, the, uh, the like rotational spells, this is, like, it kind of depends. It, it's, like, whatever. Like, I, I think that, yeah, like, basically reduce half of the abilities that people have in the game. Like, it's just way too much stuff going on. Especially with, like, rotational abilities that players have to, like, dynamically choose when to use in combat. I think is overwhelming. It's just too much stuff going on. And also, people have add-ons that play the game for them in that aspect as well. But the main thing that I really care about the most is the add-ons. I think the add-ons issue is the biggest deal. But the other ones are, you know, kind of like whatever. Look at uh, PvP, for example. One big add-on takes up your entire screen. Complete disconnect from the games. Add-ons are fucking bullshit and cheating really sucks so much stuff going on. Yep, there we go. I think this video is bad faith. There's no way he doesn't know the nuance of your takes, but they're omitted here. He's just talking about it. It's not really a big deal. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I'm just glad people are talking about what I was saying. And I think that really, I, I was surprised to see how many people agreed with me about add-ons. Like, I knew that the 40-man rating thing, there's the video. I think this is a good video. Give it a like. I, I, I really like Nixium a lot. I've known him for years.